Okay, what's going on? This is part 52. Um, We're going to be talking about patents. The black ingenuity snatchers. Um, The list of black inventors is a long and impressive one. But the list of those blacks who profited from their own inventions is too short to even qualify as a list. The carefully laid traps and barriers not only to patents but also to capital manufacturing distribution media and markets all but to ensure that black inventions are wrested away from the inventors before they can use their creations to become entrepreneurs you know employers of and employers of black people it's said that this patent system rewards american ingenuity but the patent system before often rewards the theft or the thief who uses his status as a member of the white race to exploit the market for his own profit. During their enslavement, Africans were engaged in every form of highly skilled labor, including engineering and, and, and mechanics. They access their ancient genius as builders of the pyramids to develop machinery that made their forced labor more productive and efficient. So, right quick, something that just came to my mind. Um, think about it. In order for these inventions that were made by black people to be stolen, that means that the mindset of the African or the enslaved black man or the enslaved Negro during those times, his mindset, even after slavery, even after being whipped, even after being dehumanized, degraded, and in every form of the word dehumanized, in every single aspect of that word, his mindset was still focused on making the world a better place. Because he could have hid his invention he could have kept his inventions to himself hell black people could have rose up and caused a mutiny on this entire country could have but black people were psychologically mentally destroyed intellectually um intellectually hindered intellectually stagnated so there's a lot of things that that, I mean we could have ended up building pyramids here and that's one thing that a lot of white people like to ask is you know um, how did if, if you're the if you're the founders of if you were the ancient Egyptians how did you build the pyramids fuck all that there's this book called complimentary by Malamu Baruti and um, he he talks about the nature of white people. There is no way that white people could have been the Egyptians just by looking at their deities and the stories that were told about their deities. In the Egyptian stories, their deities did not interact with humans the way that the Greek gods and Roman gods interacted with human beings. Not only that, the nature of their deities, the nature of their gods, just the nature of their gods alone shows you, proves to you that the Egyptians could not have been white. The nature of their deities sexually promiscuous and womanizers you see what I'm saying so there's no way when you look at Egypt and you see their um, symbols of phallic worship and uh, fertility gods of fertility and things of that nature their gods interacted with gods and if someone wanted to get pregnant they prayed to that god they didn't have sex with that god (laughs) but 
there's no way that the Egyptians could have been white. When we talk about pyramid builders, these were black people. Okay. Um, among those products created to African genius are the rotary engine, lawnmower, horseshoe, elevator, refrigerator, cash register, gas burner, printing press, pencil sharpener, fire extinguisher, fountain pen, gas mask, traffic light, and even the electric light. The cotton gin, an earth-shattering invention that generated uncountable riches for the European was credited to the Massachusetts-born Eli Whitney. But earlier cotton genes were found and used in Africa, Asia, and in the plantation south long before white Europeans siphoned the credit and the wealth worth billions. Now, for all of those white people who say pull yourselves up by your own bootstrap. How were our ancestors able to pull themselves up by their own bootstrap when their inventions were being stolen? Patents were being stolen that were worth millions. Just imagine where black people would be right now if white people allowed us to keep our patents. We would be the majority by law, by political perception. We would be the majority we would be the 1% sitting on top of the world. Elijah McCoy's lubricator allowed trains to run continuously for the first time causing railroad operators to demand the real McCoy without knowing the black source. Today, the McCoy name is unknown. The wealth redirected from Elijah and his family to white profiteers. George Washington Carver's experiments were so advanced that he founded hundreds of revolutionary uses for peanuts, soybeans, pecans, sweet potatoes. The plastic he created from peanut oil was used to upholster Henry Ford's first automobile. Carver died poor but plastics excuse me um, but plastics now wastefully based in petroleum oil have become central to everything in use today guess where that invention would have black people and then let's not even talk about the car now when I tell when I tell white people that they have no history or they have no culture and they want to say we invented the cars now I'll say something off the wall and crazy and stupid in their mind you know that a car isn't a new invention what do you call the engine under the hood or how do you refer to you you call that engine horsepower engine right that's that's no different that is no different from chariots and other horse drawn um, chariots and other forms of transportation that use the horse that's why they call it a horse engine so the car is nothing it's nothing new it's not all you did was you extended it (laughs) <laughs> you extended the chariot, put four wheels on the chariot, and what a top to cover you and some seats. I mean, come on, man. <laughs> I reach. <laughs> um, let's see. 
Though Thomas Edison is credited for the invention, he was not the first to conceive of or attempt to develop an electric light. It was Louis Latimer who was the first to succeed by creating a filament that can remain lit over long periods of time, finally making electric lighting practicable. Further proving that he, and not Edison, is the inventor, it is Latimer whose drawings are patented. It is Latimer who supervised and supervised the installation of electricity in New York, Philadelphia, Canada, and London. It is Latimer who wrote the first electricity manual. It is Latimer, not Edison, who provided the critical expert testimony in court in defense of Edison's patents on which millions of dollars were at stake. And it is Latimer who died poor in 1928 while Edison's family empire is based almost entirely on the genius of that black man. I'm telling you, when when I say that I cannot trust based on their history this is what I'm talking about it has nothing to do with the color of their skin it has nothing to do with you know who has personally done something to me this is all about their history If you hear about sharks eating people, what makes you want to go and befriend the shark? If you hear about, I don't know, a volcano that's always active, why in the hell would you want to go near it? I'm talking about to where the volcano, like the lava actually come. Why would you want to go by that part? You see what I'm saying? White people by their very nature are dangerous. These stories that we hear about white people, these are not fables. These are not bedtime stories. These stories that we hear about white people and their nature is their history this is in their genetics and people say oh you preach hate and and all this other bullshit it's not preaching hate if if i was to get up and stand before a classroom full of kids and say uh thomas edison versus nikola tesla nikola tesla And then I mentioned our brother Latimer. You will say that I'm being any kind of word that aligns with uh, discord or I'm creating discord or I'm creating conflict. Why? Because now I mentioned a black man. See, this is the stigmatism that always occurs in our society. Whenever we mention a black person that goes against the status quo of Europeanized perception of the the colonialization that they wanted to implement or that they continue to implement, we are the ones who are wrong. We are the ones who are causing conflict. We are the ones who are rebellious. And I will take that. I will take rebellious. But don't say that I'm causing conflict when I'm just simply telling the truth. 